Let me give you a brief introduction of UR. Basically what we're doing is we're supporting AR and VR scenarios with a so-called template system and mainly we're focusing on product visualization but meanwhile we're also touching other fields like industrial applications and so on. And we're a team of 14 people based in Vienna and we have another office in London and starting to target US. We have created applications for various customers in various industries. And today I want to show you a demo of how you can actually create an application with the viewer system. Um, so I'm going to quit the slides and go over to a live demo. So basically what I'll do now is I'm logged in in the viewer backend and I click on adding a new application. I will type in an application name. I will select one of the so-called templates that categorize the industries and verticals. And once I've created this AWE demo application, I'm getting kind of a white label furniture application in this scenario that I can then start branding. Wi-Fi is ticking a bit to load it, but that should come up soon. Okay, so this is how our white label solution looks like. And what I've done previously is I've picked a few images that I can then here apply using CSS. I use an inspect feature and basically exchange the CSS of the parts that I want to modify. Now let's move this down a bit and um, let's also take the logo up here and I hit inspect, I hit the logo and there we go. Let's make it a bit bigger, 250 and now I'm saving it into the back end. What I'll do now is I'll start a screen share that will show my device. What I'll do now is I'll start the so-called Viewer SDK app and I will enter the bundle ID of the application that I've just created. So I switch bundle to awe.demo. Tells me to restart the application. And once I restart it, it will download the branding and apply it to my application. So I hit OK. And I have the branding that I just created on my device. So we kind of shifted the branding process of an application into the cloud, allowing you to create applications way faster. So um, let me show you a quick feature set of what we can do now. So basically I can um, fill my environment and place a virtual item in my environment to see how it would look like. Um, I can use a freeze feature for example. I can also use a marker mode um, that will let me place an item on a marker and walk around an item. This is using Vuforia tracking by the way. And in VR mode I can use the viewer room layout that lets me define a room shape by placing doors and windows and yeah kind of redefining my room and then I can I can see that in my custom environment also starting to walk around in that environment. This is basically the standard feature set that we have if it's just regarding um, styling an application with CSS. Now it's going to get more uh, technical because I want to show you um, the APIs that we actually created and that we also offer. So there are two ways of using the viewer system. Either you just modify templates that we already have or you create your own template. If you want to create your own template, I will show you um, I will show you a quick demo of our so-called scripting layer that lets you that lets you access that lets you access the data. 
and the scene. So right now I'm using Safari to debug the application that is running on my on my device. And I'll scale down this device a bit. And what I can do now is I can use the the model manager saying get model from repository and requesting 36651 if I'm not mistaken this is um, a valid ID and it's going to return a promise so I will pipe the promise into window.model equals model and that will give me that will give me a model variable that I can then access and I can whatever see the name of it and uh, and access other variables and if I now use the scene manager in order to insert that model into the scene um, providing a JSON with model equals model it will actually start inserting this item in my scene still downloading some stuff but it will appear shortly and I think I have an I think I picked the wrong ID 36651 36651 there we go so now this worked and now I have this item in my in my application and for example I can access the instance by using the scene manager and accessing the selection and well I need to select it of course and now I have it selected and this selection will bring me to an instance that I can then modify. I now want to show you um, an even more complex scenario. Um, or actually uh, will upload a model into our system. So basically what I have to do here is I'll um, create a model in the database. Just inserting a name, selecting a model bundle that basically contains an FBX and an ambient occlusion map. I'll upload this to the backend and taking a few seconds and then I will show you how to define materials in our system and how to access this model within our applications. So now it's uploaded and I started our so-called material editor. Okay, so now here I have the chair that I've uploaded. I can select the surface that I actually wanna colorize and so I can either pick uh, a material from the material list or I can drag a material onto a surface defining an option. So what I'm doing now is I'm defining that fabric can be either gray or green and I'm dragging the wood onto the wood and so on. Saving this into the database so um, that's done now and if I now open the web 3D view of an item. I will have the material options like I defined them. So here I have the chair available in green and gray. I want to show you another scenario that is getting even more complex. Um, again, I'm switching to my iPad screen chair. It's an application that we created for uh, a company which is doing awnings. And this is a scenario of parametric models where it's about to select a custom scale item. I'm opening this configuration and it will give me an awning with a menu of um, dimensions. So I can change the scale I can change the projection and it's going to adapt accordingly. I can change the mount angle and even animate and close it. 
So this is a super complex scenario that we made um, that that we made a system that lets you stretch items depending on on certain parameters. But even more interesting is the the programming API for it. So um, if I debug this application and um, let me uh, open the model. This is a group. That's why I have to pick multiple children. So basically if I select this item, I'm getting a marker look 1600 item that has a few properties. So everything you see that you can actually change in the application like the fabrics and the frame and the dimensions is represented as so-called properties in our API. So what I can do now is I can not only um, look at the properties, obviously I can um, also change property values. So what I would do here is I will change the pitch which is the angle, the mounting angle to 10 degrees and execute that and it's going to adapt the pitch. I'm going to do it again and I can also change the fabric. For example, let me look up a number. Let's pick green with some stripes. That would be 31426. And let's change the width to 300. So once I execute this, it's changing the parameters of the actual model accordingly. So what we kind of created is an abstraction of product configuration with material options, with parameters that is accessible from the JavaScript side. And we're offering this as a developer tool in order to ease the process of creating applications. Thanks for listening. Pass by at our booth.